Hello, you all. My name is Ashley. This is Royal Domain Authority. I hope that everybody is all in well. On this channel, we are a community. We love God, but we don't love God on our own by ourselves. We love God together. It's not about individuality. Well, it is about individuality, but together as a community, we encourage each other, we love each other, we support each other, we pray for each other, we build up each other. And so God is looking down on us, you all. And when I say God is really, really restoring our youth, God is really rebuilding us. He's renewing our strength. God is doing it, you all. And I just want to come on and really, really uplift you all and encourage you all and inspire you all on today to sing unto God a new song. Sing unto God a new song. Sing praises unto the Lord. Release the sound. Release the sound. God is waiting for us to release a sound. God has been rearranging some things. God has has been blocking some things God has been stopping some things and it has been looking like you know God ain't answering or we don't hear God or God is stopping and blocking the very thing that we need from God and it's not that God is lining things up and he's setting things in order and God is looking to us God is looking down from his throne and he is commanding us to march and sing a new sound unto the Lord. Release the sound. I've been speaking this thing for like at least the last year, but it's really become so urgent that God is saying, release the sound. Sing, what is the sound? A new song. Release the sound, release mourning, release grief, release worry, release strife, release um, discouragement, release the hurt, the, the pain, the confusion, release all of that and release a new sound unto the Lord. Enjoy, rejoice because God has not broken your bones. Rejoice and shout because God has not broken your bones. God is creating in you a new heart of flesh. He's cleansing your heart. All of those prayers that you pray, now it's time to thank God for God answering your prayers. And you may not see it. You still may see a little loom and a little gloom. You may still feel like you have to fight that battle, but that battle has already been won. Release a new sound, you all. So yesterday morning, and I'm going to put this word in the atmosphere, prevail. Prevail. Prevailing is when you are winning the fight. It's a fixed fight. The battle, the, the problem, the tribulation, the trial, whatever it is, the circumstance, whatever it is, the opposing forces cannot and will not win because the Lord shall prevail. Father God has already prevailed, right? So I'm going to throw that word out there, prevail. So yesterday morning, you all, I woke up with joy on my heart, you all. You all know I've been going through it, but anybody that know me, know me, know I'm going to praise my way through it. I'm going to pray my way through it. I'm going to shout victory. And, and a lot of people know, not a lot of people, but a lot of people that know me, they don't be knowing what I be going through behind the scenes, behind me praying, behind me praising, you know, because the lifestyle I live is thankfulness and gratefulness. So I'm always in the presence of God, thanking him and praising him, even in my hard times, even in my trials, right? So some people know what I'm going through. You all know, because I've shared it with you all, but people looking on the outside in really would never know because I don't walk around with my head held down. I don't walk around, um, you know what I'm saying? Crying and complaining and murmuring and you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, you know, what, what I allow to come out my mouth is, is, is victory, right? I don't allow defeat to come out my mouth. I don't allow worry to come out my mouth. I may express my concerns and my issues, but I'm not going to dwell on them because I believe and I know in my heart of hearts, my spirit tells me, the Holy Spirit tells me that everything is okay, you all. So last night before last, I went to bed and yesterday morning, I ended up having a dream. And when I woke up yesterday, yesterday morning after the dream, I had joy in my heart, you all. I was rejoicing. I was supposed to record this video on yesterday, but 
I was so full, you all. I was being filled up with the goodness and the glory of God. And, and I was just taking delight in the word of God on yesterday till God was, you know, telling me to rest. So I was in the word of God all day yesterday and I just rested in his presence. And because I wanted to record the video on yesterday, but God, God was like, no, just chill. Right. But today I want to come and tell you all that the story, your story, the narrative of God is changing the narrative of God is changing your story right now. So you need to get up and shout. So father God, before I even release this word, God, I just ask God that you just have your way, God, with this word. Breathe in the name of Jesus, God. God, you told me, God, months ago, God, that every word that I release, God, every word that I breathe out, God, that you would breathe on it, God. God, so I'm praying, God, God, that you would breathe on this word, God. God, restore the youth, God, of your people. God, restore the yields, God, the canker worm and the locust worm has eaten up. God, restore, God, God, their strength, God. Restore their faith, God. God, let them know, God, that this this was a fixed fight and the fight has already been won, God. Now, God, it's time to rejoice, God. God, it's time to rejoice, God. God, and I pray, God, that this word, Father God, go out to whomever this word was meant to be for, Father God. And God, that they bring this word back to you, God, for direction and clarity, oh God. And God, we don't worry about the enemy, God. We don't wrestle back and forth with the enemy, God. God, we don't wrestle, God. God, we know, Father God, God, to take it to you, Father God, and lay it at your feet, God. But right now, God, we focus on the win, God. We're focusing on the restoration, God. We're focusing, Father God, God, on the renewed strength, God. God, on, on our restoration, God. We're focusing, God, on our hope, which is you, God, our ever-present help in the time of trouble, God. And we thank you right now, God. God, God, we don't come to you asking for nothing, God, but we thank you, God. I ask, God, that you will breathe on this word. Holy Spirit, increase in me while I actually decrease in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you all, so yesterday, my dream, I was, I, I don't know where I was. I know I was out, outside because I seen an environment like I was outside and it was like a lot of people just standing around. They was like gathered around talking. And I remember telling them, I remember I even told, I either told them I act or I asked them. I either told them, hey, y'all, look, I'm about to walk in the air. Or I asked them, hey, I believe I asked the people outside that was gathered around, do y'all want to see me walk on air? Right. And they were just standing there, just standing up, just standing there, right? Looking a little crazy, a little bit, you know. But they were just standing there waiting to see what I was about to do. So I began to walk on air, you all. Just, you know, when I say on air, I'm talking about I was like suspended above the ground. I was in the sky, in the air, but I was walking. And when I got done walking, I was still in the air. It was just like I was just standing on ground, but I was actually standing in the air. And I began to shout, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So I was glorifying God after God allowed me to do that is a miracle because we can't do that in real life. We can't walk on air in real life. That was a miracle. And when I said, Jesus, 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 I was basically glorifying and magnifying God in the dream ended. And when I woke up from the dream, you all, I was kind of iffy because I was thinking, you know, in my mind, like I was manipulating the air for me to be able to walk on it. But the Holy Spirit had to remind me that that is who I am in my dream world. In my dream world, since I was a little girl, I was able to, I'm able to fly. I'm able to go to different regions like flying. Not like I got wings flying, but I'm actually just in the air flying. Like I don't have, I don't need wings. I don't have wings, maybe spiritual wings that I never saw, but I'm actually in the air flying, going from region to region, helping people, praying for people, interceding for people, um, fighting certain battles for people. And I've been having these dreams since I was younger. I've also had dreams of me walking on air or in the air like gliding in the air like going like i said from region to region but i'm like on assignment doing these things i'm not just doing stuff just to do it like i'm on assignment when i'm doing these things so in a dream when i asked them hey do y'all want to see me walk on air i felt like there was a type of manipulation 
But Holy Spirit was like, no, you were showing them what faith looks like. You all, I'm, I'm like about to be in tears because all yesterday I had to praise God because my life is a testimony, right? And the people that are around me in my natural life, in my waking life, not when I'm dreaming, but in my waking life, God is always, God tests our faith, right? But he allows us to be tried. But God also in that trying, God tests our faith. And when God is testing our faith, he's doing it to build our character. He's doing that to strengthen us. He's doing it that to show us what's on the inside of us, that God is using it for his glory. He's doing that to show us that we are chosen, that God did call us, that we are a part of the I am, that I am the great I am, that we are a part of the royal priesthood, that God called us and he's chosen us. But God uses my life on a daily, you all to show others around me what faith looks like. And I'm not putting myself on a pedestal, but God has told me ample of times when I wanted to give up, ample of times when I wanted to just throw in the towel, ample of times when I didn't think I was worthy, ample of times when I thought that I messed up and God wasn't checking for me or that I wasn't chosen, that I wasn't called, knowing that I'm called and chosen. But you know how we go through things in our lives and our mindset, our thoughts, our fleshly thoughts, our fleshly mindset, which is of the world, the devil, the enemy, Satan, those thoughts that come from hell will sometimes overrule us and, you know, try to overpower us and condemn us and have us feeling, you know, ways of anxiety and doubt and uncertainty and all of these kind of things. But even through it all, God has constantly reminded me that my life is a testimony and that God is using my life, you know, for others around me to show people that if I brought her through, I'm going to bring you through. If she had faith to get through this, then the faith that I, cause God is the author and the finisher of our faith. So the faith that God has placed in you, you know, you can get through it too. Like, so God was telling me, no, you wasn't manipulating anything. You do that in real life. You're walking on water in real life. You're flying in the air in real life. You're doing all these things and it's because of your faith. It's because you believe in me. It's because you praise me, you know, when you don't have to, right? God inhabits the praises of his people. You have people of God that don't praise him, that complain. Then you got people of God that praise him no matter what. I'm on the other side. I'm going I'm the one that's going to praise God no matter what. And God is saying he inhabits the praises of his people. And that is how he broke it down to me. He was like you was able to 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 um show people what faith looks like. If you got to walk on water, if you got to walk in the air, because God is placing you above your circumstances. That's another thing that Holy Spirit revealed to me on yesterday when I was seeking the Lord and when I was in the word of God and when I was praying, because I prayed in tongues almost the whole time yesterday when I wasn't like actually studying, you know what I'm saying? Getting the interpretation of this dream. I've been praying in tongues like crazy, you know, shout out to uh, prophetess Ebony Evans. You guys go follow her. I know half of y'all are following her. That that woman right there, she truly is a is a vessel for God. And I thank God for her life and her obedience. And so, you know, when the Holy Spirit was revealing all of this to me on yesterday, Holy Spirit was telling me that me being in the air and being able to walk on air or walk in the air, God is saying that he's raised us up above our circumstances that we did not allow our circumstances to take us out but our praises inhabited father god and our praises in our prayers in our thankfulness in our obedience in our sacrifices in our um patience and in our perseverance and our our control us relinquishing control unto god all of that has raised us up above our circumstances and so I didn't even know what to name this video. I still don't want know what to name the video, but I don't know. But, um, and God was like, at the end, when I was able to walk through that thin air, 
I was able to do it effortlessly. It was like I've been doing it my whole life. It was like that is what I do. And when I was walk after I got done walking in thin air, I just stood still and I began to shout out Jesus. See, I wasn't giving glory to myself. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's a fresh revelation right now. I wasn't giving glory to myself for walking on air, for walking in the air, for being for being above my situation. I was giving glory unto God. I was giving glory unto Jesus. Like I was really giving glory to God and not my circumstances, not me, not nobody else, but God, you all. So... I was just in awe yesterday. So when I was, so when God was giving me this interpretation, he was speaking to me all day yesterday. And in the midst of me commanding my, my, my day, after I woke up from that dream yesterday morning, I got up and began to command my day. I was getting ready and my mom had asked me to go to the store and get her something from the store. So my mom sent me on an errand, which really it was God. And the product that my mom needed, she needed as an urgency. My mom was a little elderly, so this product that she needed, she needed it right away. Like I needed to hurry up and get ready, go to the store and bring it back to mama, right? In the name of the product, that my mom needed, the brand name of the product that my mom needed was Prevail. You all, God is telling us that we are, we are prevailing through our circumstances. We are to sing to God a new song. We are to sing unto God a new song, you all. God is so good. God is so good. And I got, God gave me so much scripture to back up this dream that it didn't even make sense. And most of this scripture that God was giving me was about the redemptive work of Christ. It was about God redeeming us from the wilderness and, and you know, bringing us out of the wilderness into a garden full of fresh flowers, a garden full of beauty, a garden full of fresh vegetation, a garden full of splendor, a garden full of just the fullness and the richness of God. And so, the first verse that God gave me was Psalms chapter um, 18, verses 19, and then verses 20 through 24, and then verses 33 through 36. So Psalms chapter 18, verse 19, it reads, He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. So God is saying in the dream, when I was, when I was walking in air, into thin air, I didn't just was taking baby steps. I was actually gliding through thin air, right? And God is saying that he is enlarging your footsteps. He's enlarging your territories. He's making your feet like deer's feet, like hind's feet, so that you can be able to climb the mountains without no issues, so that you can be able to tread territory in the rough terrain. He's making it smooth. He's, he's, he's bringing, like it says in Isaiah chapter 40, how he's bringing the hills low and he's making the valleys high. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. So verses, um, Psalms 18, Verses 20 through 24, it reads, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he's re recompensed me. For I've kept the ways of the Lord, and I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I also was blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. God is saying the things that you suffered, the things that you went through, the, the sins that you've committed, the ways that you went in and the paths that you took, God is rewarding your obedience. He's reward rewarding your diligence. He's rewarding your faithfulness because you have allowed God to take you through a process of cleanliness, of cleansing your hands right? Of washing your feet, of washing your head in his word that you did not turn away from his statues, but you walked in obedience to the fullness of God's righteousness for his namesake. That's why you're able to shout Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's why you're able to rise above your circumstances, you all. 
God is rewarding your faithfulness. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. This is David speaking. This is David speaking. After God had delivered him from his enemies and after God delivered him from Saul, this is David speaking unto God in thankfulness and praising the Lord for his mercies, for God being a sovereign savior. Come on. So verses 30, 33 through 36, it reads, he has made my feet like the feet of deer, and he sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can be in a bow of bronze. You've also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. God is allowing you to move with swiftness in this season. What took a, a long time and periods of seasons before and seasons of periods, or however, however, I'm trying to say it. And what took a long time, long periods of time and seasons before or times past or what took years to do or what took years to be delivered from or what took years to have peace what took years to gain clarity or months on end, God is rewarding you. God is making your feet like hind's feet. God is uh, allowing you to move in this season with swiftness. So pay attention in this season. When God says go, go. When God gives you certain direction and certain instruction and certain revelation, take heed, right? Because God is going to show you results. You are going to be yielded results. God is going to give you strength of, of, of strong. And, and it says he teaches my hands to make war. God, God is teaching you to war with your hands. All of the hell that you went through in previous seasons, your next is now. The time is now that you have been taught, your hands have been taught to war. Now when distractions come, now when... um disappointments come now when the persecution and the criticism come now when the lies come now when the blame and the faulting come now when people come and they start pointing their fingers that you are letting you down or turning their backs on you you're going to know how to war you're going to know how to shout the name of jesus and not be moved god is giving you an arm of strength in this season God is protecting you. He's providing you what well, he's always been that. Psalms 23, right? Psalms 23, our, our, our um, shepherd who shields us, who protects us, who provides for us, who, who looks after us, who gets us in line when we veered away from the path, right, of the other crowds of the sheep. And a lot of people, people in the world, who don't believe in Jesus Christ, they'll say, I would never want to be a sheep. Why would people want to be a sheep? Why would people want to be a follower? It's not that we are followers of other sheep. We're followers of Christ. Amongst the other sheep who are following Christ. So when they go to talking out their mouth about the God you serve, let them know, no, we're not following each other. We're following God. We're allowing God to put us in our rightful place because the world does not want to obey the ways of God. They want to do what they want to do, which God does give you a, um, a, a choice of free will. But we chose God's will, okay? So you all, so Isaiah chapter 40, I, oh, I'm coming with the word today, you all. I'm going to start at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 and 2, it says, The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. The rose of what? The rose of Sharon. The rose of Sharon is Jesus, but blossom as the rose in, in, in like a beautiful field of beautiful wildflowers, of beautiful flowers, and how they blossom, and how they sway from left to right, and how they just... You know, when the sun beam down on the flowers, it, you just see the reflection of the flower itself is beautiful. In verses um, two, it says, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice. 
even with joy in singing the glory of lebanon shall be given to it the excellence of carmel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord the excellency of our god god is telling us isaiah is prophesying to the nation to to the nation of israel that we were once were that they were but the the law the, the law in the prophets have been made full by jesus christ so i still believe that the the, the words of the prophets are still um prevalent in this day and age as well so isaiah was telling um israel that you were once was a wilderness you were once a wasteland where people just could come and dump their trash on you because that's what you are that's what you act that is that's what you live as right and god allowed you to be just what you wanted to be in that time all those years in that season because god had a plan which is jesus christ so it was a wilderness time a, a time of wilderness a time of being in the wasteland but god is saying that now we have now we're living as as um as um not in the in our wilderness but we're living as a land of vegetation a land that is producing a land that is beautiful a land that is plenty a land that is abundance and the richness and fullness of the glory of god and therefore now we are springing up and we're rejoicing that's what i was doing at the end of the dream before the dream ended i rejoiced in the name of the lord jesus I was rejoicing that I did not allow my problems to take me out, that I did not allow my issues, that I did not allow the issues of life. That's all, just life itself. Overcome me, but I overcame it and I rose above and I was able to walk through it with no issues. I was able to walk through those and I was able to give God the praise that he so deserves. And, and then here it goes, um, Isaiah chapter 35, verses 8 and 10. We're in the same um, chapter. A highway shall be there in the road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks this road, although a fool shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up upon it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. God is saying your sorrow, your sighing, your waiting to, to certain um, seasons and times in your life was over with because it brought despair it brought loneliness it brought shame it brought ridicule it brought hurt it brought frustration it brought condemnation all of those things god is saying that this road the highways and the byways that you shall walk on now is going to be filled with nothing but the people of god it's not going to be filled with the wicked it's going to be a highway of holiness that the people that are unclean that are unjust that are unrighteous righteous would not be traveling along this road that you not in life now we're gonna see those type of people but these are the people that god is saying and in, in the types of things that you're not no longer going to have to worry about because god has delivered these people in your hand god has delivered these situations in your hand god has given you that authority that when you walk the highway of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it. He has given you that right that now you're walking in the way of, of, of you, you ain't got to worry no more. You ain't got to be frustrated no more. God is giving you the spirit of rejoicing because it's time for you to rejoice. The wolves and the lions and the ravenous beasts, you don't have to worry about no, that no more. You have over come them greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world because you have because the lord has overcome the world so therefore you've overcome those things those people those issues those circumstances those ideologies those idol 
false and idol worship. Those things that you put above God, those problems that you worship above all of those things, God is clearing your path. God has cleared your path. God has cleared your path. And it brings me to Isaiah chapter 40. Um, when God, when, 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 um, Isaiah chapter 40 is the prophecy of John the Baptist, when he was clearing the way and making way for Jesus to come through to do his thing. You know what I'm saying? And it says the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This word is prophetic, you all. When I asked the people, did they want to see me walk in air, on air? I believe I said on air. When I asked the people, did they want to see me walk on air? They was all standing there like, well, what you gonna do, basically? God is saying that when I did that in a dream, I was preparing, I was making, I was preparing the way for the Lord. I was crying out in the wilderness, right? The people in that dream, I believe, represented the wilderness or that environment in the dream because we were outside, represented the wilderness. But even in the wilderness, I was preparing a way for the Lord to come through. And when I walked that little path, right? It wasn't a path that was carved, carved out, but I was in the air and it was like a certain path that I did walk, right? Spiritually. And when I got done walking, or showing you all my faith, I, 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 I shouted Jesus. That means Jesus, the glory of God came because I praised the Father, I praised God. So Jesus came and revealed the glory of God. And the dream, that was it. The dream ended after that. But spiritually, God is saying that when we prepare the way for the Lord to come through, we're, re we're, we're, we're yielding to the Holy Spirit to reveal the glory of God in our lives, in our very vessels, our temple. You all. And in that same chapter, this is Isaiah chapter 40. In that same chapter, the most famous verse that everybody liked to quote. Everybody liked to quote. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That is what God is saying. Prevail. It's the reason that God, that what was going on with my mama yesterday, right? I had to go to the store to get a certain um, product for her in the name of the brand that makes that particular product is called Prevail. God is saying that you shall prevail because when we prepare the way for the Lord to come through, we're crying out Jesus. That means we're, we're at the feet of God and we're crying out Jesus how I did in a dream. I praised God. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I said it with all of my might, all of my strength. I said it with everything that was in me to let people know that it is Jesus who we need to be calling on in this time. Well, whereas there's wars and rumors of wars, all these killing, all these violence, all these hatred and racism and hate crimes and all of this that's going on. Shortages and recession, people call it recession, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Jesus is the answer. Because he is going to, he is going to make straight in the desert. He's going to make a highway for God. When we're, when we're doing that, when we are Walking on thin air by our faith is like walking on water. We are preparing a way, a, a way for, for the Lord to come through.